This show contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Movies with Ron. Movies with Ron. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Movies with Ron. I was looking in the headlines today. Yeah. The movie headlines. And I see Hayao Miyazaki has officially returned to Studio Ghibli. Didn't he already do that? When was the last time I talked about that? Did he make a movie, retire again, and then return again? I don't know. Did he? Man, I don't know. Remember what I was saying about his really young girlfriend getting yeah. pregnant? Yeah. Turned out to be like septuplets. The legend has returned, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to episode 63 of Movies with Ron, the podcast where my older brother recaps a movie he saw from beginning to end for me and you, because we like his versions better. It's okay if you've seen the movie. It's okay if you haven't seen it. The experience is unique. So let's get it on. I'm Chris, your MC for the time being, our sound and sample guy, Rick. Hey, yo. And here he is, folks. He's the ball cracker. Death on foot. You know him. You love him. He's Ron. 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 Yes. 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 All right, Ron. Hey, what's up? Annabelle Creation. Folks, last week was Annabelle Creation. If you haven't listened, go back and check it out. All right, so the director... Got on Reddit. Yeah. Did a little Q&A. Had to explain a few things, did he? <laughs> well, first off, he explained he had to make the demon the same as the as the first Annabelle. Yeah. Yeah. Big black horn demon. <laughs> yeah. He said he would have changed it if he could. But someone asked him, because this is his second film, they ask... Does it feel any different having a movie in theaters the second time around? Uh Uh-huh. And he says, it's still quite nerve-wracking. It looks like the film will perform really well this weekend, but you never know. And checking Rotten Tomatoes to see if it's going up or down is scary. Rotten Tomatoes. Yep. The bane of every filmmaker's existence now. Yeah, man. Fuck them. I learned a little something about Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, yeah? They used to be owned by... uh, few people like you and I. Then they sold it to Fandango like over a year ago. And it was over a year ago when Rotten Tomatoes hit it big. Yeah. And you started seeing those scores everywhere because Fandango is, uh, they got the money to put that shit out there. Right. They made you care about it. Uh Uh-huh. They're like, here's the good movies. Uh, you have our app to buy the tickets for them. You know, more spotlight. Uh, but... The thing is, here it is in a nutshell. Okay. It's all amateur critics. The tallies of all the reviews they count. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of, it, there's a lot of grass, back in the day, it was grassroots online film critics. That's what Rotten Tomatoes started with. And, uh, they feel too much pressure. That's the problem with Rotten Tomatoes. Hmm. There's a certain, uh, expectation now. Because you might be one of, like, thousands yeah. that determines a movie's score. Freshness. Yeah. But you got stuff like Wonder Woman coming out. Even women came forward and were like, I was too scared to give it a low rating. Oh, really? <laughs> it was just another superhero movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, the first one. I'm sure it was decent. But it was, like, in the 90s for so long. Became the most popular movie. Ever. It's probably the most uh, profitable this year, right? Yeah, you can't trust it. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Need to give a shout out. Another podcast called Home Video Hustle. Yeah, man. This one is uh, hosted by Brent and PJ. Brent has an outlet to nerd out on his movies and educate his best friend at the same time. Yeah, cool. I checked out their uh, Running Man Episode, yeah, it's pretty good. They love that movie. They love it better than Star Wars. Whoa. But about The Running Man, the year Running Man takes place is 2017. Oh, yeah. And we're like closer to that world 
than we ever were to that Back to the Future 2 world. Damn right. <laughs> Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> hey, remember Passengers? Folks, we have an episode where we did Passengers, that uh, Chris Pratt, Jennifer Lawrence space thing. Yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah. You know, I, I had problems with it, and I, I spoke about them. Uh -huh. And people have said, like, the solution would be to start with Jennifer Lawrence waking up, and you learn about Chris Pratt afterwards. Yeah. It'd make it a completely different movie, but uh, the consensus was everyone knew something was off. Yeah. About it. I mean, it's still good. It like about, about Chris Pratt being creepy? Just about, like, what kind of story is this? You know, it, we, we know it's a romance, but um, sci-fi romance, but there's something off here. I figured it out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it involves the original first script for this movie. Oh. The first two acts of the movie. It's exactly the same in the script. Okay. The original. Okay. The ending is fucked up. All right. Wow. He's alone on the ship. Uh-huh. Goes nuts. Falls creepily in love with Jennifer Lawrence, who's still in hibernation. Yeah. He wakes her up intentionally and then uh, pretends, you know, he just woke up as well. They get to know each other. They fall in love. She doesn't know until she finds out. Uh-huh. Then it's a whole nother thing. Her hating him. Big sequence. He basically murdered her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. She that, accused him of that in the movie, I think. Yeah. And he did. Yeah. <laughs> he did murder her. Lawrence Fishburne wakes up. Uh -huh. Turns out the a meteor came in the ship. Yeah. And damaged like the supercomputer. So the computer's been pulling all the power from all the machines, including... Chris Pratt's and Lawrence Fishburne's hibernation chambers. Uh -huh. Lawrence Fishburne, he's dying fast, tells him how to fix it. So they have that harrowing moment where they fall back in love. And uh, Chris Pratt is like, taking on the fire, fixing the ship, you know? Uh -huh. And then she has to go out and catch him because his tether severed. Right. He's floating out in space. She pulls him back in. Yeah. He's like suffocated. She has to revive him. And then... The the supercomputer of the ship reactivates. Yeah. And everything is peachy keen. Only in the original script, the ship thought, because the computer was reset, that it was in port oh. on the planet. So it woke and everyone up. And it automatically up. does not wake everyone up. Okay. They're all in these sub-chambers, because when the ship goes to the planet... The subchambers break away and have their own landing gears. Oh, okay. It ejects everyone from the ship. Holy shit. And everyone floats out in space. There's nothing they can do. They are, they're all going to die. Jesus. So Chris Pratt saves her fucking life at the end of the movie by murdering her by waking her up at the beginning. Wow. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. That would have been way better. It fixes everything. It's so fucking dark. <laughs> <laughs> like thousands of people are gone. But uh, that was the problem with passengers. Someone cleaned that up. Yeah. So part of what you're feeling through the movie does not get eliminated. You know? What? The dementedness of Chris Pratt. Oh, yeah. Okay. Only if you kill everyone else using that circumstance does the dementedness go away. Yeah, you're right. Would have been a better movie. Hell yeah, that would have been way better. Oh, God. Sorry that took so long. All right, guys, you ready? For what? For Movie Thing of the Week. <laughs> All right. Movie Thing. <laughs> this one comes from 2002's Reign of Fire, directed by Rob Bowman. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. What else has he made? You got me, Dave. <laughs> Starring Matthew McConaughey and Christian Bale. Yeah. Fighting fucking dragons. Remember that game where I connected Interstellar with Reign of Fire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when are we going to play a game again? <laughs> you want to do one? Right now? No, set it up. Sure. Next week, we'll do one. Let's decide 
Oh, yeah. We called it From Here to There. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next week, we will pick a character, an actor, and pitch how he's going to get from the end of the first movie to a second movie that he starred in. Right. He or she. Let's do it. All right. Rick, what you got? Well, for those of you who haven't seen Reign of Fire, you should definitely go check it out. It is like a modern day dragon slaying movie. One of the reasons why I love this movie is because of the fight scene in the end of the second act between Matthew McConaughey and Christian Bale. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's hard to watch. It's an interesting palette of color in this film. During the day, everything's kind of blue. I guess it's post-apocalyptic. Matthew McConaughey's character is taking recruits to go into London and find the King of the Dragons and kill him. Mm -hmm. This is kind of against the camp leader that Matthew McConaughey's men are currently residing in, uh, Christian Bale. So they wind up getting into a tussle. (laughs) And the big thing that I like about this scene is how much savagery Matthew McConaughey uh, takes out. Yeah. And lays into Christian Bale. Yeah. And the real estate that he takes up on screen. (laughs) Like in this film, Matthew McConaughey is a big, bulky dude. He is stacked. And when this movie came out, you had more reasons to like Christian Bale. Yeah. Matthew McConaughey was not as cool as he is now. I don't know. I think when I saw this, he became pretty damn cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's part of why you went to see it, but ugh, watching what happens to Christian Bale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey turns into like a a fucking animal Yeah, going after him. All kinds of guttural sounds, and I love guttural hero sounds. I'm sorry. I just love that. <laughs> And he does it. He does it well. And because of the color palette of uh, the movie, everything being blue and dark outside, even in the daylight, Christian Bale is all oiled up and looks black. Yeah. Like, a should have wit. Did I say <laughs> Christian Bale? Yes. You mean Matthew McConaughey? I mean Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't remember that. With the big, bushy douchebag beard. The chrome bald head. <laughs> when he's fighting Christian Bale, he takes up... Like, every action and move that he does is so over the top. Like, when he's fighting him, his arms are out like the Predator. (laughs) It's crazy. (laughs) He makes him his bitch. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. So, uh, Matthew McConaughey, at the end, when they're fighting, like, the last dragon, (laughs) uh, he does that, like, 400-foot jump (laughs) with the axe. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like he just gets gobbled up. (laughs) Yeah. But then you're left with Christian Bale, and you're like, man, you are lucky he died. (laughs) (laughs) Gerard Butler, too. Yeah. Yeah. He should have jumped in there, this 300 ass. He was a skinny guy back then. (laughs) Hadn't yet uh, got his personal trainer, I guess. But definitely go and see that film for that fight scene. Matthew McConaughey is a son of a bitch. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was your... Movie Thing of the Week. Real quick, gonna recommend a movie. All right. It's got Johnny Depp before he went crazy. It's got the perfect Johnny Depp. From 1999, it's The Ninth Gate. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I obsessed over that movie. I had that on VHS, but I never upgraded. I haven't seen it in a while. I did. It's all about rare book dealing. Uh-huh. And it's like, uh, okay, this is directed by Roman Polanski. Yeah. Fucking legend, dude. He, like, got charmed by this story. It's based on a book by Arturo Perez Reverte. I started reading his books because of this movie. Yeah. Like, Jurassic Park made you want to be a fucking paleontologist. Yeah. <laughs> this movie makes you want to, like, deal books. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's all, he's like, he's in France or Italy. Everything starts to uh, point to gates of hell. Yeah. Like he's uncovering in these old books. Right. It's like a horror thriller. And there's some serious satanic shit at the end. Hell yeah, there is. He ends up uh, a sex scene with Satan. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The Ninth Gate from 1999. Sex scene with Satan. All right, man, Logan Lucky. 
Hell yeah, the poor man's Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, but it's supposed to be. The Ocean's 7-Eleven. Yeah. Directed by Steven Soderbergh, who made Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> Written by Rebecca Blunt. The mysterious Rebecca Blunt. I, I read her bio on IMDb. Yeah. All it says is, as of July 2017, suspected to be a fictitious person. <laughs> yeah. And I want that on my bio. <laughs> then I'd like start an Instagram that is really just as mysterious, but photos. This is how I write. Yeah. Ooh. It's like pictures of dead people. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Starting a whole creepy campaign. But people say it's his wife. The director's <laughs> wife. Okay. The actors are like, we communicated with her via email. Never met her, though. Yeah. Because Soderbergh is one of those guys. He retired. Yeah. And this is his first film after retiring. Yep. He's like 54, though. I still don't see why he would need to do that shit with his wife. Well, maybe his wife like had a flash of genius, and he was the only way he could have his wife have a movie made of hers. <laughs> He's like, all right. This is my gift to you. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. How about some titles from reviews for this movie? Okay. All right. An inversion of the Oceans films, but just as much fun. Oh, uh, yeah. This one's Oceans 7-Eleven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they said it in the movie. Oh, re really? They did. They talk about Oceans 11? Yes. Moving on. Slow, boring, and beyond dull. Eh, nah. Here's one. Trashy and funny. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boys with toys. We talked about boys with toys last week. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my favorite. Nobody laughed. People walked out early. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one. The same self-worship we're all used to. So it's a mixed bag. Had a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Go see this movie. Dude, I forgot to say about Annabelle. You said it. They release it to only certain critics. Yeah, that they know are going to like it. Yeah. And then post their shit to Rotten Tomatoes. Right. And so for the first week or two... It's got a 100%. Yeah, that's what Annabelle did. It was a strategy. Fucking gerrymandering. Gerrymandering on RottenTomatoes.com. Yeah. Arnold needs to know about this. Yeah. One of us is in deep trouble. Fuckers. <laughs> Steven Soderbergh, when he was a struggling writer, director, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he started out small. He's a success story. He didn't come from a rich background, privileged, you know. He rented the room above the garage in the Gyllenhaal family's home. Weird. Yeah. He's one of the most versatile directors, too, because he balances art house films he's done with mainstream films. Yeah. Like, he's he's gone really obscure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Best illustrated in his first film, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, but he's also made Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. So it's like, not, not many people can do that. But, uh, okay, Logan Lucky was once meant to star Matt Damon, Michael Shannon, and Catherine Heigl. Yep. And instead we got Channing Tatum, Adam Driver, and Daniel Craig. <laughs> 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 like she was supposed to play his role. <laughs> <laughs> we are 20. talking about science here. <laughs> <laughs> they told him to sound like Catherine Eichel. <laughs> okay. How about some quotes from our stars? Yeah. You want to hear about stuff they talk about? Yes. Adam Driver. Kylo Ren. Kylo. The new Vader dude. Vader dude. The greatest living actor of our time. <laughs> he says, The deadly thing in my job is to attach too much meaning to everything. You have to have a sense of humor about yourself. I'm definitely trying to figure this all out as I go along. How to craft a career. As things get bigger, I have days of depression sitting in the house and wondering, what are you doing? Is it even relevant? Quite the thinker, yeah. Adam Driver. He's been in some good stuff. He's a decent actor. 
How about Daniel Craig, Mr. James Bond, talking about his films? I wanted to do as much of the action work as I could so that the audience can see it's me and it's real. I've heard that before from another Bond actor. Yeah? The one no one likes. <laughs> the guy from the skiing one. The guy who was only for one movie. No. <laughs> People talk about, that's George Lazenby. That's why he was in one movie and got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Doing his own stunts. He was in Hot Fuzz. Uh, Timothy Dalton. Yeah. There was this big, I remember seeing a behind the scenes of one of his Bond movies uh -huh. on HBO. They used to do like 15 minute things like that. And he was all like, I'm the sexy new Bond man. And they were talking about him doing his own stunts. And he was like, yes, if you can see it's me, it's me. If you believe it's me, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, I remember thinking, weird. <laughs> I love Timothy Dalton. I do like him. Too. He was my first Bond, my exposure as a kid. Yeah. Whenever people ask about your favorite Bond actor, I always say Timothy Dalton just to shake things up in the room. Yeah. 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 He's the beast in Beautician and the Beast. All right. <laughs> Here's some more Daniel Craig. I feel like I became a sportsman of sorts, and that meant acquiring injuries and carrying on and bashing through to the next level of pain. Ooh. Physical actor. All right. How about Channing Tatum? You know, we like him. Do you? Channing Tatum says, It's really hard for men to tell other men, I love you, without putting a man at the end of it. Like, I love you, man. Yeah. Channing Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Start your engines. Because it's Logan Lucky on Movies with Ron. It's showtime. All right, so we uh, start off with a couple of logos, and then we are in Boone County, West Virginia. There's this cute little girl sitting there watching her dad fix a truck, and they're listening to Take Me Home Country Roads. Why is this song in every movie now? It's like uh, John Denver. Yeah. There was another song in that Kill Shot movie. Kill People in the warehouse killing each other. Free Fire. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just Guardians of the Galaxy affecting yeah isn't fucking alien covenant yeah really yep it was a different song in free fire but yeah you're right i don't know maybe they're free now <laughs> they're on <laughs> <Okay>. sale <laughs> <laughs> so he's talking about this song because he's obviously a fan of john denver and the little girl is like yeah but you know dad it's i do like this song but i don't think it's right for me to sing it in the pageant turns out i'm, I'm gonna sing a rihanna song and he's like, yeah, uh, okay. She's going to be in one of those little uh, honey boo-boo kid pageants. Yeah. Yeah. And he's obviously on hard times because she's like, you know, mommy said she'd pay your phone bill. And he's like, no, nah, yeah, I don't like cell phones. I don't like having them. But he loves his daughter. He's like, the only reason I need a cell phone is to take your picture. So then it cuts to him at work and he's like in some weird fucking mine, like underground, like driving a power loader. And then somebody comes and they're like, hey, yes, the uh, boss wants to see you. So he has to leave and he walks out of the mine. And then we see that the mine is not a mine and it's just some tunnels underneath Charlotte Motor Speedway. Mm. And he goes in to talk to the boss, who is Jerry from Parks and Rec. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man, sorry, I, I, I got to let you go, man. He's like, why? Well, some of the higher ups, they saw you leaving work the other day and they saw you limping. And that's a pre-existing condition, man. It's an insurance liability. So he fucking gets fired. Loses his job. Man. This is Channing Tatum, right? Yeah, sorry. Channing Tatum playing Jimmy Logan. Okay. And he's all pissed off when he's leaving and he like throws his helmet. And then he gets in his truck and just blazes his way back to West Virginia. From mm -hmm. North Carolina. <laughs> and he's playing Take Me Home Country Road the whole time. Walks into a hair salon where his sister Melly is working. Everybody in this movie is a redneck. Rich or poor. And it turns out he uh, he was late picking up his daughter. Like he was supposed to pick her up for the pageant, but mm -hmm. that was yesterday. Oh, jeez. And he's like, oh, shit. And Melly's like, yeah, no, don't worry about it. I got it. 
She's like, yeah, we would have called you if, uh, you know, your cell phone was turned on. And there's this old lady in uh, one of her salon chairs mm -hmm. who's like, what kind of a man doesn't have a cell phone? Are you one of those Unabomber types? <laughs> and he's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes to his ex-wife's house. She's played by Katie Holmes. And she's like a redneck who married a rich car dealer guy. Yeah. So she still like dresses like a slut. Yeah. Katie Holmes. Yeah. But, right. it, but is rich. <laughs> and she like has nothing else to fixate on other than her daughter's beauty pageant. So she's like not letting her eat ice cream because she'll get fat. Mm. And it's just this cute little girl, you know? So Jimmy's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> He's just there to uh, get yelled at by her for being a fucking day late. Yeah. And he meets her new husband who's like a big douche. He's taking all of their little kids to go and see the Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah. And Jimmy's like, it's uh, kind of rough for kids, don't you think? <laughs> He's like, no, nah, man, they love it. It's great. <laughs> and so they're all running outside, and she's like, hey, uh, Jimmy, I need to talk to you about some legal stuff. We're going to move to to Lynchburg. And he's like, no, you can't do that. That's across state lines. Oh, I'm going to get a lawyer. And she's like, with what money? <laughs> so then he just drives off defeated. His life sucks. And what do you do when your life sucks? You go to the bar. <laughs> and this bar is uh, run by his brother, Kylo Ren, who has one arm. Mm. Is he like a soldier? He is. He did two tours in Iraq. Oh. So he's a hero. So they're sitting there talking and Kylo is like, our family is cursed, man. We got the the worst luck in the world, yo. Did you know that uh, grandma so-and-so, she won the lottery, but she lost the ticket? And he's like, man, that's bullshit. And he like tells all these other stories about how unlucky people in their family are. <laughs> and he's like, and you, you were a football legend, you know, in high school. And then you had your, your, your knee got blown out. And now here you are. Mm. So then Jimmy goes to the bathroom and in walks these three weird guys in these like red leather jackets. The leader of which is Seth MacFarlane <laughs> with like long shaggy hair and and he's playing the executive of this energy drink called To The Max. <laughs> and he's playing it British. And he's a fucking asshole. He looks at uh, Kylo Ren and he's like, oh. <laughs> he's looking at his arm. <laughs> and then Kylo's like, what can I get you? And that's how he talks this entire movie. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I've just thought of a song title. The Kindness of a One-Armed Bartender. <laughs> and then he and his buddies just start fucking laughing at Kylo Ren. <laughs> And then he orders a martini. And then Kylo Ren makes a fucking martini with one hand. And it is beautiful. Really? Yeah. Oh. He's like throwing shit up in the air and then just like picking up the glass and catching it. <laughs> and then Seth MacFarlane is like, hey, uh, eh, that's pretty cool. Uh, could, would you mind doing that again? I want to tweet it. You know, I don't post it. It's awesome. Jimmy comes back from the bathroom and he's like, I don't take kindly to people fucking with my brother. Making fun of him. He did two tours in Iraq. There's a fucking soldier. And he's like, ah, oh, yes, well, uh, thank you for your service. <laughs> and then Jimmy's like, hey, you're that, you're that guy. You're that guy on TV with that drink, aren't you? He's like, yeah, you know, I am pretty famous. Hey, man, can I, uh, can I get a picture with you? He's like, yeah, of course, of course, come on. And then Jimmy leans in for, a, to take a selfie with him. And the guy's like, <laughs> making a hand signal and shit. Like, he's so fucking full of himself. <laughs> and then instead of taking the photo, he just drops the phone and punches him in the face <laughs> and just gets into this big fucking fight with these three dudes, okay? <laughs> as soon as the fight begins, Kylo Ren just, like, picks up a bottle of alcohol and walks outside, okay? <laughs> the fight's going on in his bar. He walks outside. He looks at some dude sitting on the front porch. He's like, hey, man, you got a light? Guy gives him a lighter and he just walks over to their SUV, which is all like emblazoned with the fucking energy drink logo and shit. <laughs> and he throws a brick through the windshield and then it just cuts back to the fight inside. <laughs> and Jimmy's now getting his ass kicked. So they just leave him on the ground and then they leave. They walk outside and their fucking car is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Seth MacFarlane starts uh, like calling the police or whatever. His two buddies are just like standing there next to him. And he's like, well, don't just stand there. Film it. Film it. Come on. <laughs> Jimmy's leaving and he walks past him. He just turns around and gets into Kylo Ren's face and he just goes, cauliflower. 
and just keeps walking. Now Seth MacFarlane is like on the phone. He's like, oh yeah, you know, it's a fucking on fire, blah, blah, blah. Kylo Ren walks past him and just yells at the camera, did you just say cauliflower? And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Next morning he goes to Jimmy's house and Jimmy's like cooking him breakfast. And as that's happening, he looks on his wall and there is a list of things to remember when you're about to rob a bank. And it's like, know when to walk away. Don't worry when shit happens. Shit like that. Yeah. He's like, you know, the last time you said cauliflower, I went down for six months. You know, it turns out that cauliflower is a code word for when they used to commit crimes as kids. Mm. He's like, my life of crime is over. Jimmy's like, no, man, I got a job. I got a job we can do, and it's fucking awesome. We're going to rob Charlotte Motor Speedway. He's like, fuck, how the fuck are you going to do that? (laughs) He's like, well, because they're doing all that construction underneath it, because all these sinkholes started appearing, so that's what they're doing under it, is they're shoring it up. He's like, now, just how do you think you can do this? And then there's this moment where Jimmy just looks at him and he goes, I know how they move the money. (laughs) So then we see a flashback from when he was working there and uh, some dude got covered in a cave in and they, they had to pull him out. But then he sees through the wall that just like gave way, sees this weird concrete room with all these plastic tubes running through it. And he's like, what the hell's that? And then somebody's like, oh, that's how they move all the money from all the concession stands into the vault. And it's pneumatic tubes, just like at the, the drive through at your bank. Yeah. And he tells him that, uh, you know, in like, Five weeks, this uh, grocery chain called Grocery Castle is going to be hosting some weird car show there. And he's like, yeah, man, no one's going to go to that shit. So security is going to be real fucking light. All we need to do is just break in and rob the vault. And then Kylo's like, well, you're going to need an explosives expert. Somebody who like really knows what they're doing. And then Jimmy goes, yeah, we need Joe Bang. <laughs> And then it just cuts to Daniel Craig in prison. (laughs) And he's walking into the visitation room, and there they are just sitting there waiting for him. Yeah. And they're like, hey, how you doing? He's like, I'm wearing a onesie, and I'm on this side of the table. Just how do you think I'm doing? And they're like, oh, yeah, sorry. And he's like, do you guys have any quarters? (laughs) And they're like, "Uh, yeah, I think I do. I think I do, too. He's like, okay, why don't you take them, go over to that vending machine over there, and you press J7. You bring that back to me. And it turns out it's a packet of two hard-boiled eggs. And he pulls a container of salt out of his sock. And he's like, doctors say i am got a high cholesterol, so they put me on this low-sodium salt. Who the fuck even invented that shit? And they're like, we got a job. And he's like, no, man, hell no. I'm doing fine. I got a nest egg waiting for me when I get out. And Jimmy's like, uh, would that be the $97,000 you had buried under the oak tree in your backyard? (laughs) And then Joe just goes, maybe. (laughs) How do you know about that? And they're like, yeah, just after you went to prison for the job that you got all that money from, your brother ended up telling his wife, and then she dug it up the very next day and ran off with a trucker from Florida. Oh, jeez. And his face just fucking deflates. And he just goes, what part of Florida? (laughs) And they go, Clearwater. And he just goes, oh, god damn it. (laughs) He's like, anyway, I can't do it, man. I got five months to go, right? I'm I'm keeping my nose clean. I only got five months to go. And they're like, well, the job is in five weeks. And he's like, guys, I am incarcerated. And Jimmy's like, no, I got a plan. I got a plan to get you out. It's just a day. It's just one day's job. It's fine. And he's like, you got a plan to break me out of prison, do your job, and then get me back in here before anybody even knows I was gone. And Jimmy's like, yep. (laughs) And he's like, well, you Logans must be as simple as they say. And then both of them are just sitting there and they go, people say that? Who who (laughs) says that? Who says that? And then Joe's like, okay, I got two family members out on the outside, like my brother and my cousin. Go and find them. They can help us. So it cuts to this weird county fair that they're at. And uh, Jimmy's sister, Melly, is showing up. She shows up right alongside that car dealer husband 
He was driving some red sports car, and he's like, hey, you know, you're driving that old Nova. Why don't you uh, let me sell you something, you know? I'll, I'll give you a good deal. We're family. And she's like, we're not family. I am surprised, though, that you went with the six-cylinder automatic. I mean, the, uh, you know, the V8 is just so much better. I figured a, you know, cool, manly man like you would want that. And he's like, what? No. Like, she's like, but I understand you can't drive stick. And he's like, no, I, I drive stick. I do know how to drive stick. She's like, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, lots of people can't. And he's like, I can drive stick. <laughs> so Jimmy's like watching his daughter racing some little tractor thing. And then Kylo walks up to him. And he's like, well, I found him. And then it just cuts to these two fucking rednecks that are bobbing for pig's feet. And there's like all this applause happening. It's like this big event at this county fair. It's fucking weird. Mm -hmm. And they're talking to him afterwards about wanting their help with this robbery. And they're like, no, no, sorry. We found Jesus. We don't do crime anymore. We would need like a serious moral reason to do what you're wanting us to do. And then Kylo's like, whoa, our sister Melly, she used to work at Grocery Castle. And, uh, and they're like, uh huh. Well, then her manager got pretty handsy. And then both of them are like, oh, man. <laughs> well, so you can imagine our family doesn't have any love for the grocery castle. And then the two brothers turn to each other like privately. And one of them goes, what do you think? And the other one goes, yeah. <laughs> so they're in. They go and visit Joe Bang in prison. And he's like, go to the bear in the woods and tell him you need the bag he's been holding for me. And then it shows them meeting some fucking dude in the woods. And <laughs> the dude is just wearing a bear suit. Oh, and he yeah. hands him a bag. It's oh. fucking weird. And we see Kylo Ren in his car. And he's like sitting outside of a gas station. And he just puts it in drive. And just drives it right into the fucking gas station. <laughs> Slams through the fucking window. And uh, skids to a halt. Gets out. Walks up to the counter. And puts a bag of chips on it. <laughs> Cuts to his hearing where the judge is like, you know, I know you say your foot slipped, but uh, something just seems funny about you running into a fucking gas station. <laughs> but, you know, in light of your uh, your service to our country, I, I do understand you, you lost your hand. You know, <laughs> he's like, I'll just give you 90 days. And then Kylo's just like, OK. <laughs> and then it cuts to he and Joe Bang in prison together. <laughs> like working in the wood shop building something and joe's like yeah where'd you get this stuff and he's like melly gave it to me <laughs> jimmy is helping his daughter put on her spray tan for the pageant and he puts it in one of those fucking sprayers for painting cars <laughs> and he got a huge laugh in the theater and then melly's gonna give her her hair extensions so he's gonna be bored as hell and he walks outside some short-haired girl walks by him, and she's like, oh, that must have hurt. Referring to one of his eyes from the fight. Yeah. She's like, when was your last tetanus shot? And he's like, uh, never. <laughs> she's like, well, do you want one? And it turns out she's driving around a mobile clinic that just goes and helps out country bumpkins. Yeah. That don't ever go to the doctor. They're in there. And he's like, so your name's Sylvia? Does anyone call you Sylvie? She's like, no. Why, why the hell would that happen? He's like, I don't know. Sylvia's just like such an old lady's name. And she's like offended. He's like, I don't know. You know, it just seems like uh, uh, somebody as pretty as you wouldn't have an old lady's name. <laughs> so then her friend who works with her, she gets in. She's like, well, we better hit the road. Oh, oh. It's like big, sexy Channing Tatum sitting in the chair in yeah. the bus. Like, well, uh, we, we got to go. So she gives him a little Band-Aid that has like My Little Ponies on it after she gives him the shot. And he's leaving and he's like, hey, hey, uh, did we kiss? She's like, the fuck are you talking about? He's like, in high school, we kissed, didn't we? She's like, that's the worst thing anybody's ever said to me. <laughs> <laughs> that night, Melly is in Jimmy's place and she is painting cockroaches with nail polish, like live ones with, with like different colors and putting them in, separating them into jars. It's fucking <laughs> weird, man. And she's like, hey, you know. I see you got that list of things to do when you're robbing a bank. So what happens if shit does happen? Do you have a plan B? You know, do you know what you're going to do? And he's like, you just let me worry about that. Okay. You just, you just paint your cockroaches. Mm -hmm. And she's like, all right. So then we get one of those, uh, heist movie montages and the two <laughs> brothers are like in the hardware store, like buying all these trash bags and shovels and shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jimmy has gone back to the motor uh, speedway, and he's in there like, I guess like cleaning out his locker. But as he's doing that, he steals the map of the underground tunnel system. Hmm. He's trying to walk out of there when Jerry from Parks and Rec is like, hey, man. <laughs> It's like, oh, oh, hey, man, uh, how's it going? Yeah, I'm so sorry I had to let you go, but, uh, you know, really, I probably would have had to let you go, you know, anyway, because uh, we're we're wrapping things up here. And then Jimmy's like, what? <laughs> yeah, we're closing down the construction site. It's a miracle that we, uh, you know, we finished ahead of schedule. And then Jimmy's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. All right. <laughs> Fuck. So he calls Kylo Ren in prison, and he's like, hey. <laughs> we got a fucking problem. We're going to have to do it one week earlier. And Kylo's like, oh, shit, man. Don't you know what happens one week earlier? And it turns out it's the Coca-Cola 600. It's like one of the biggest races. All right. Yeah. So security is going to be super fucking high. Jimmy tells Melly about this and she's like, oh, all right. Well, uh, I guess I should call the baker. And he's like, yeah, call the baker. <laughs> so then it cuts to the bank inside of the motor speedway where they have the vault and shit and there's this employee there named glima and somebody's like hey glima uh someone left something for you at the the front desk she goes and it's a cake she opens up the box and it says happy birthday glima <laughs> and it shows her in the vault with all of her other co-workers and they're all just eating this cake and they're like it's not even your birthday she's like i know i don't know what the hell's going on <laughs> maybe you have a secret admirer Oh, I hope not. You know, I, I stopped with the plenty of fish. You know, I had such a bad experience. And then the front desk lady comes in. She's like, Gleema, I need you to come out front one more time. <laughs> she's like, did somebody leave me something else? Uh, not exactly. <laughs> and she's out in the parking lot and somebody has rammed her car. Oh, jeez. She's all upset. And there's a couple of cops there. And it turns out that all these little bit parts, like there's like cops and you know, store clerks and shit. Mm -hmm. They're all played by NASCAR drivers. Uh. So then it cuts to the Bang Brothers and it's nighttime and they have now snuck in underneath the uh, raceway and they went to that little room with the tubes, all the pneumatic tubes. They break them open and they dump the colored cockroaches in and then they seal them back up because there's a bunch of tubes. We see Joe Bang in prison and it's breakfast time. And he's like getting his eggs and his bacon. And then he goes over to a table full of big, tough black guys. <laughs> and he finds one of them and he's like, hey, I have got a proposition for you. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, it also shows that same morning, Gleema walking into the vault. Because she had to leave and she wasn't able to finish her cake because her car got wrecked. Yeah. And the vault has a time lock door. So the cake got shut into the vault. She opens up the vault door, or it opens up automatically. She goes inside, and there's her cake covered in pink cockroaches. <laughs> and they're like, oh, God, oh, geez. So they have to call in some exterminators to, to clean out the bugs from the vault. And the Bang Brothers are the exterminators. Uh. So they're in there, and they're, like, measuring the vault while they're spraying for roaches and shit. <laughs> and they call Jimmy, and they're like, hey, man. And he's like, yeah, are you calling me from a secure line? And they're like, what the fuck? is that <laughs> we're calling you from Lowe's man and they're at a payphone in front of Lowe's and they're like yeah we just want to tell you we got a code pink <laughs> he's like pink all right and he tells Melly, and she's like yeah so that's how they figured out which tube went to the vault gotcha yeah yeah all right so it's the next day and it's race day so there's like a big nascar montage of all the cars and pit crew members like setting up you know, like in Days of Thunder, down, 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 down. Yeah. All right. I think that was the Top Gun music, but whatever. <laughs> and Joe, in prison, walks into the wood shop, and he turns on the uh, water faucet, and he just starts, gets his mouth on it, and he just starts swallowing all this water because the water at the prison makes you sick. <laughs> then at lunch, he gets his lunch tray, and he goes and sits down with a bunch of big, tough, tatted-up white guys. <laughs> We get Jimmy going to uh, the Bang Brothers' house, mm -hmm. and they're all still asleep, so he's got to wake them up and yell at them. And they're like, don't worry. We know where to go. We know where to be. It's going to be fine. And he's like, you know, tension is high. Jimmy's like, this is it, man. It's also the day of the pageant, so Melly has to go and pick up his daughter. Cutting back to the prison, the warden 
is now walking through the cafeteria, watching all the guys eat, and it's Dwight Yoakam. <laughs> and he's got a couple of guards with him, and he turns to one. He's like, "Do we have any more problems with the, uh, you know, the water and the food? You know, people getting sick?" And the guy's like, "Oh no, sir, we fixed that. We totally fixed that. It's fine." And he's like, "Yeah, okay, good." And then he says out real loud, so all the prisoners can hear him. We do not have a water problem at Monroe. <laughs> and then Joe Bang turns around and just pukes all over his shoes. <laughs> Melly shows up at the pageant, and driving up next to her is a nice new V8 sports car. And uh, the car dealer husband is like, you'll notice today I am driving the V8 stick. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, that's great. Uh, too bad you don't know how to drive it. <laughs> and he's like I, I can drive it she's like yeah yeah whatever and then she takes uh the daughter into the pageant and they're like getting her ready and doing her hair and she's like now listen now, right now i have to go off and run an errand but i'll be back to pick you up and she's like well is, is daddy out there and she's like well i didn't see him yet but you know he's working so and then the ex-wife is like oh i heard he got fired she's like well i didn't hear that cuts back to joe and now he's in the prison infirmary and the nurse is like, motherfucker, you guys, you know, you keep saying you drink the water, you get sick, but it's okay for you guys to fucking shower in it. I don't get it. <laughs> Shows Melly leaving the pageant and uh, she goes over to the trunk of her car, opens it up, pulls like some batteries and shit out, like, uh, I don't know, technical gear. Yeah. And she goes over to the V8. Also in the trunk of her car, we saw some like firemen's helmets. It was weird. And then a whole bunch of bags of other shit. Okay. So back with Joe Bang, he's like, uh, ma'am, you know, uh, before you get started, I need to take a shit. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay. And she's bringing him a bedpan. And he's like, oh, no, really, please. You know, do, do I have to use that thing? You know, uh, I promise, you know, I, I'll be okay. You know, I'll just walk slow over to the, to the bathroom. She's like, no, I don't have time to take you. And then mopping the floor in the infirmary is Kylo Ren. And he's like, oh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, I could take him. <laughs> she's like all right but if he falls it's your ass and he's like okay so then uh he has to walk him over to the bathroom they open up the door and then joe bang's just like i'm gonna need some help in here <laughs> so they both go inside and then they're like reaching up into the fucking seating tiles and like pulling down <laughs> tools that they have hidden there it never showed them hiding the tools up there so there's like some corners that were cut for this movie yeah and uh they end up ripping the paper towel dispenser slash trash can out of the wall and there's a big tunnel behind it. <laughs> Not that they have dug. It's just like the crawl space of the prison. I don't know where there's like plumbing and shit. Yeah. So using that tunnel, they go uh, and they get into the wood shop. Once in there, we see what they were making in there earlier and they were making a facade for the bottom of the prison van. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is about to leave with like laundry and shit. I don't know. So they just climb onto the bottom of it and hold on and then just click these wooden covers over themselves. So it stops at the gate and the bomb inspectors or, or uh, you know, they're walking with mirrors to look for yeah. prisoners hiding underneath. They're just like, all right, it's cool. Go ahead. <laughs> so that's how they fucking escape from prison. <laughs> <laughs> So the race is starting, and it's on TV in the cafeteria of the prison. So then one of those big, tough, tatted-up white dudes gets up and walks over to the table full of tough black guys, and he throws his milk all over them. Mm -hmm. And they're all like, what the fuck? And he goes, what's the matter? You don't like being white? <laughs> and then a giant fucking prison lunchroom fight just breaks out. <laughs> and they're like fighting each other and shit but they like immediately turn on the guards and just start kicking the shit out of them and then they fucking take over the lunchroom <laughs> in the control room the warden's there and he's like what the hell's going on <laughs> and he sees what's happening and then he calls around the prison and he's like lockdown 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 we have a situation in the cafeteria everybody's on like a code two lockdown so then we see the infirmary door slide shut and lock so the nurse is like, oh, okay, Joe Bang is stuck in the bathroom mm -hmm. and he can't get back in here. So then Fish and Sam, who are the Bang brothers, Fish Bang and Sam Bang, <laughs> they go out to this like power conduit thing outside of the uh, the racetrack and they blow it up. 
using instructions from Joe Bang. <laughs> so now none of the credit card machines at any of the uh, concession stands will work. So they have to switch to cash only. Hmm. Uh. Joe and Kylo get off of the prison vehicle at a gas station, and they end up meeting up with Melly, who has stolen the V8 from the car dealer husband. <laughs> so she picks him up, and they're speeding down the highway, and uh, Joe Bang is in the back seat, and he's like, Wow, who are you? And she's like, Melly. And he's like, Melly, Melly, rhymes with smelly. <laughs> and you can tell he likes her, because... Uh, He's get you know, he's been in prison. Yeah. <laughs> and uh he's like, Well, you have grown up, haven't you? <laughs> and she's like, I brought some clothes for both of you, and for you, Kylo, I brought something special in the bag. And he looks back and there's his prosthetic arm in the bag. <laughs> and he says to uh Joe Bang, he's like, Could you hand me my arm, please? <laughs> and Joe Bang just like holds it up and he goes, This one? <laughs> <laughs> And he's changing, and he goes, now, now, Melly, I'm back here. I'm, uh, I'm changing. I'm about to get naked. <laughs> so, uh, no peeking. And then it just immediately shows her look at him in the rearview mirror, and he goes, I said no peeking. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just flying down this highway, and Kylo's like, you're, you're driving pretty fast, okay? <laughs> you know, we're going to get noticed by cops. And she's like, it's race day, man. All the cops are all around the fucking racetrack. There's only one of them that's out on patrol. And that's been taken care of. And then it shows Jimmy making a call uh, to the police. And he's like, yeah, it's a purple, you know, car with an old lady in it. I don't know. She's going crazy and stuff. So then they end up passing by this. And the old lady is the bitchy one from the salon who was like, are you a Unabomber? (laughs) Then we see this weird sequence Concerning the driver of the To The Max race car. (laughs) And he's played by the Winter Soldier from Captain America. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, yeah, you know, I uh, once I upgraded to only clean software, my body started, you know, acting better and it was so much more healthy. And it's just shots of him like doing yoga in his mansion and shit. And he goes, software is what I call food. (laughs) So he's like a fucking weirdo. Yeah. It shows the concession stands and they're like, yeah, everything's fucked up, man. We got to do only cash, you know? And then there's a boss walking by and he's like, okay, you know what? Just speed up the cash drops and we'll just figure it out later. Okay. So it shows them uh, all the cashiers just like, okay, just loading money into these canisters and just sending them up the tube. Mm-hmm. And then it shows in the vault and it's just all of this cash is just piling up in this room. <laughs> It shows Seth MacFarlane and he's talking to a camera crew and he's like standing in front of the to the max car and he's like, yeah, you know, to the max, it's only uh, put into cans. I, I never drink it out of bottles, but I had these made and he had some special champagne bottles like filled with to the max <laughs> He had them like custom made and he's like, yeah, here we go. And he drinks some and then he hands it to the driver and the driver's like, um, I don't, uh, I don't drink that stuff. <laughs> he's like a health nut. And then Seth is just like, Gets up in his face and he's like, you contractually obligated to drink this shit on camera. You fucking do it. <laughs> so the driver does it, but it pisses him off. Now Joe and Kylo are at the raceway and they're uh, they're walking around and Joe looks at uh, Melly and he's like, yeah, you guys got some cash. I need some cash. Kylo's like, what the fuck do you need cash for, man? He's like, come on, man. I just need a couple. You know, it's been so long. Man, I've been in prison, man. <laughs> so they give him some money. And the first thing he does, and he, go, he goes and buys two beers. <laughs> so he's like, give me a couple of them beers, darling. And uh, you know what? Uh, right there. Give me two of those packs of gummy bears. So it cuts back to the prison. And Warden Yoakum is now attempting to negotiate with the prisoners inside of the cafeteria. <laughs> and he's talking to him over the intercom. And he's like... All right, I have received your napkin list of demands. <laughs> and uh, the first one, you know, uh, you know what? I am more than happy to, uh, to oblige. I will definitely get a copy of uh, Dance with Dragons, and I will uh, add it to, in the library to the uh, Game of Thrones shelf. <laughs> and all the prisoners just like, yeah, they start cheering. <laughs> He's like, but, uh, you know, the, the next two books... Um, I, I can't put those there. They have yet to be published. Okay. And you hear the prisoners go like, man, that's 
bullshit. <laughs> He's like, the winds of winter has not even been written yet, man. I mean, George R. R. Martin, you know, he said that, you know, with the TV show, you know, getting off the ground, oh, he, geez. his writing schedule was all messed up and he has not completed them yet. Now, I know the schedule says that it should be out, but it's not. And then one guy starts yelling out, and he's like, that's bullshit. A couple of new prisoners that came in, they knew all what was going on with that hot bitch and them two dragons and shit. (laughs) And the warden goes, well, I have to tell you that I believe those two inmates got their information from watching the TV show. (laughs) Okay, and everybody's like, no, bullshit, bullshit. (laughs) He's like, they have jumped ahead. They are no longer, that show is no longer even following the books. <laughs> Bullshit! This is oddly specific. I know. <laughs> and then one of the, uh, one of the prisoners just like, fuck that, just like walks away from the window. <laughs> and the warden's all like, wiping his forehead. He's like totally exasperated, <laughs> like the fucking negotiations are going bad. <laughs> <laughs> so back at the raceway, they're singing like America the Beautiful, and Joe is chugging his beers. So now he's like a little drunk, and he looks at Kylo, and he's like, all right, let's blow this thing. <laughs> Kylo takes him over to this trash chute, and he just looks at him and goes, okay, remember, roll. Don't hesitate, just roll. And then Joe's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then Kylo just pushes him down the chute. <laughs> so he, he falls down it and he lands in a fucking dumpster full of like trashy garbage and shit and he's like oh man what the fuck nobody said anything oh shit roll roll and then he just rolls out of the way and kylo (laughs) hits the dumpster (laughs) so now they're on the bottom level and they walk through the construction entrance into those uh tunnels Mm -hmm. there they find jimmy and joe bang is like are those my bleach pens he's like yeah two bleach pens in a plastic bag just like you asked for and he's like, all right, let's do this. And he fucking op- starts opening up the gummy bears. And he puts them into the plastic bag. And he pulls his little fake salt out of his sock and just dumps it all in the bag. And then he opens up the bleach pens and starts squirting them into the bag. And Jimmy and Kylo are just like, "That, that's it? That's what you're doing? <laughs> he's like, yeah. What, what do you mean? Fucking gummy bears and bleach? <laughs> I thought you were going to do something. And he goes... You said the security was high. You said we couldn't use normal fucking explosives. What did you think I was going to blow it up with a stick of dynamite? And they're just like, yeah. (laughs) And he's like uh, putting all this stuff in the bag. He's twisting it up. And he's like, okay, now how far away is the vault? Uh, 20 or 30 feet. Well, is it 20 or is it 30? We are talking about science here. And then Jimmy's like, man, I, I really don't understand what you're doing with the gummy bears and the bleach. And he's like, okay. And he starts talking about like potassium chloride or sodium chloride. And he's like, with the bleach and the fake salt, I have created an equal exchange of ions. And then they're just sitting there staring at him. And then it just cuts to him having already drawn all of it out on the wall and explained it to them (laughs) scientifically. He's like, see, so with the sugar, then you have energy. Okay. And then all you need is heat. (laughs) And then you get what I call a Joe bang. (laughs) (laughs) So he twists the bag up and then he's like, okay, give me one of them canisters. And they gave it to him and he's got, he's moving like real slow now. And he like puts it in the canister and closes it real slow, goes and loads it into the pipe. And then it just shoots off. Okay. We see it go into the vault and then it reaches its destination and does not open. Meanwhile, Joe has run away from the pipe and the other two brothers are like, what the f- oh, and they have to follow him and get behind like the wall. So then nothing happens. And they're like, man, I thought you were a fucking ex- expert. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, no, should have gone off by now. <laughs> and so they're just standing up to like wonder what's happening when all of a sudden the canister just shoots back out of the tube. And they're like, oh shit, it's coming back. It fires out and fucking Kylo Ren catches it. <laughs> <laughs> and he catches it and just like stands motionless. <laughs> Joe Bang is like, don't fucking move. He's like, I'm not, I'm not. Okay, all right. All right, let me see it. And he takes it and slowly opens it up, pulls the bag out, and he's just like, oh, now I see what the problem is. I twisted the bag too many times. <laughs> so then he like untwists it a little bit, puts it back in the canister, and then 
fires it back into the vault. Now it works and it fucking explodes once it gets in there. Boom! <laughs> Big ass titties! <laughs> <laughs> so then all the smoke starts coming up through all the other tubes, all right? And it, uh, it starts coming out in the concession stands. And everybody's like, oh, there's smoke coming out of the tubes. <laughs> they're calling the security and they're like, okay, we'll send somebody down there to check it out. Like, what kind of smoke is it? I, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so they send two guards and they're like, Pretty incompetent seeming. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the prison, the prisoners have now blocked out all the cameras with peanut butter and put like lunch trays over all the windows so the warden can't see what's happening. But we see that they're all just like sitting there watching the race on TV. Now underground, we see Jimmy, Joe, Kylo, and the two Bang Brothers, and they are vacuuming the money out of the tubes (laughs) with these big giant machines that are used, I guess, for moving dirt. So they got these giant fucking hoses and they're just like shooting cash into garbage bags Mm -hmm. and filling them up. Joe was like, man, this is too slow. Come on, turn it up, man. Turn it up. (laughs) And then Jimmy walks over to the switch and ends up accidentally switching it to vacuum. So then the tube just sucks Kylo's arm right off (laughs) and up into the hose. So Kylo goes nuts and he's like, no. And then... Uh, him and Jimmy are like trying to feel the hose to see if it got stuck there. Yeah. Because if they find the arm, they're going to figure out who did it. Yeah. Fish and Sam get really mad and they're like, no, nah, man, we need to fucking finish this job. You fucking tricked us into doing this shit. Now we have to do it a week early. We told you we had a moral issue with with robbing this fucking raceway. OK. And you said that it was because of Grocery Castle, you know, getting handsy with your sister. But now it's just NASCAR, okay? And NASCAR's never done anything wrong to anybody. <laughs> it's so American. It's like we're attacking America right now. <laughs> Kylo's going crazy. He wants his arm back. And Jimmy has to, like, talk him down. Like, don't worry, man. It'll be okay. <laughs> and he's like, they're going to find it. And then they're going to be banging on my cell by breakfast. He's like, no, man. I promise you I will get it, okay? Jimmy said that to him. Cutting to the NASCAR race, the to the max driver, the winter soldier, ends up fucking crashing his car, I guess because he got sick from drinking the fucking energy drink. Yeah. We see the two guards down there, and they're like, hey, uh, you know, does anybody smell any smoke? They pass by Fish and Sam, who are driving a little golf cart full of garbage bags, and they're like, hey, what are you guys doing? Uh, trash run. Okay, you, you guys smell any smoke down there? No, nah, man. Uh, you know... We both lost our uh, sense of smell in an accident or some shit. (laughs) And they're like, yeah, okay, just get out of here. So they drive away, and then the guards are like, yeah, nah, something ain't right. Let's go check this out. So they go further down into the tunnels. They start to smell smoke, and then they see smoke coming out of a door that says no smoking. They open it up, and it's just some guy named Earl sitting there smoking a cigarette. (laughs) Like, hey, man, there's no smoking down here. And the guy's like... Oh, that must be why they put this ashtray here. <laughs> like, man, get out of here. I got four minutes left on my 20-minute break. Now Fish and Sam have gotten to the gate, and they push the start button to open it up. It's like an automatic gate, and it just opens up a little bit and then shuts. Opens up a little bit and then shuts. And they're like, what the fuck? So they can't get out with the money. So down in the tunnels, Jimmy is like, hey, man, they should have been back by now. Why don't you go see what's going on and help them? And Joe Bang is like, okay. So he leaves, and Jimmy's just down there by himself, still vacuuming money out. Joe's up there trying to open the gate with him, and he can't get it figured out. Finally, Jimmy shows up. And he's like, nah, man, the chain is caught. You know, I did this all the time when, when I was here doing construction. So here, here's what you have to do. And he, like, bends down, fixes the chain, and then the gate opens up. So then they leave. They go out, and they load Jimmy's pickup truck with all the garbage bags. And then they, like, tarp it. Mm-hmm. So now Joe and Kylo have to get back to prison. (laughs) So they're walking out through the tunnels, and they run into Seth MacFarlane and the driver of the car, who are arguing about how his drink is what made him sick and and made him crash. And then uh, Seth MacFarlane is like, yeah, you're fucking contractually obligated, you piece of shit. And he (laughs) throws his helmet and shit. And that's when he sees Kylo and Joe. And he looks at Kylo, and he's like, you're that guy. <laughs> that son of a bitch. And then it just cuts away. And we just see Jimmy in his truck full of money in the in the bed of the truck. And he's just hauling ass up the freeway heading towards West Virginia. 
Now in the prison cafeteria, one of them pulls out like a piece of paper and then breaks a pencil, pulls the lead, the two like halves of the lead out of the pencil, sticks it into the paper, and then pushes the entire thing into an electrical socket, which then ignites the paper, and then he just drops it into a trash can. So it starts a little trash can fire and then he holds it up to the smoke detector and the fucking fire alarms for the prison start going off. Now, the warden and the control crew can't see in there. They don't know what just happened. So they're like, oh, my God, there's a fire. And then one guy's like calling it in and the fucking warden's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to call it in. And he's like, man, there are no fires at Monroe. That also happened when the fucking riots started to break out and they were like going to call it in. He's like, no, 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 I'll deal with this. <laughs> you know, we don't have riots at Monroe. So like, man, the fucking building could burn down and all of them could die. Yeah. And the warden's like, all right, fine, call it in. <laughs> so they call the fire department. Now we see Joe and Kylo and they are in their fake fireman outfits. <laughs> And they just jump onto the back of the fire truck and hide underneath all the hose. <laughs> and that's how they get back into the fucking prison. <laughs> the firemen go and break into the cafeteria and all of the prisoners are just sitting there real nice, like waiting for them. <laughs> and there's just like a smoking trash can. <laughs> and the lead fireman just walks in with an extinguisher and he's just like, uh, and he just squirts a little bit of it into the fucking trash can. <laughs> They had to lift the lock down for all the firemen to get in. So that's how Joe goes and climbs back into his infirmary bed. And the nurse comes in. She's like, I thought you would have left. And he's like, I got stuck once that riot happened. I was so scared. <laughs> so now we're at the little kid beauty pageant. And it's time for his daughter to sing her Rihanna song. So she gets up to the mic. And uh, instead of singing the Rihanna song, she just sits there and stares off into the crowd. And then we see that Jimmy has finally made it. And he, he runs into the back of the room like he's there to see her sing. And she's so happy to see him that she then says into the mic, I chose this song because my daddy loves it and I, I love my daddy. And then she starts singing Country Roads Take Me Home. And it's really cute and awkward but endearing. <laughs> uh, and then the crowd starts singing it too. Aww. And then we see Jimmy start to sing along. So it's really cute. We get a shot of the ex-wife, and she's all like, <laughs> So it cuts to them walking out of the pageant, and his daughter has won. She's got a big crown and a big trophy and shit, and they're all happy. And the car dealer husband is walking over to his car, and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it's like covered in mud, like mud marks, like it's been speeding down some dirt road and shit. Yeah. And it's like all dented up. He's like, what the fuck happened to my car? <laughs> Then we see Jimmy leave, and he's still in the pickup truck full of the garbage bags, and he stops off at a gas station, and he parks it, and then he walks over to a semi truck, and he's like, hey, are you going, uh, you know, are you going east or whatever? And the guy's like, yeah, can I get a ride? He's like, sure. So he gets in and just drives away with that guy and leaves his pickup truck full of fucking garbage bags with money in them at the gas station. And I was like, what the fuck? And I looked at Heather, and I was like, what's going on? Did I miss something? <laughs> She's like, no. So now we cut to the salon, and Melly's in there working, and there's that bitchy lady with the purple hair, and then there's a news segment on the television there in the salon, and they're like, oh, yes, we've, uh, police recovered the money from the robbery, and, uh, you know, it seems that the, uh, the bumbling crooks, you know, they were able to get away with the money, but something happened, and they ended up leaving their car at the gas station, and folks are calling it a bumbled robbery, and they're calling it the, uh, the Ocean's 7-Eleven robbery. <laughs> and the bitchy purple-haired lady is like, why, if you're going to go through with that robbery, why the fuck would you just leave the money at a gas station? And then Melly's like, yeah, I guess they chickened out. So it's like Jimmy saw his daughter singing and he like had a change of heart, you know? So it cuts to the cash vault, which is empty, basically. And there's two FBI investigators. And one of them is fucking uh, Hillary Swank. She's like talking to the, the fucking vault employees and then it shows her talking with Jerry, the construction guy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, you know, we we were actually shutting this job down. We finished up. And she's like, yeah, that's great. And then all of a sudden another officer comes in. She's like, hey, we just had a witness call in who said he saw the whole thing. He saw the two robbers underneath mm -hmm. in the tunnels. So then it cuts to Hillary Swank and her partner interviewing fucking Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> 
And he's in his big fancy hotel room and he's laying on the bed and he's got a big bandage across his broken nose. <laughs> and she's like, okay, so you saw these two men walking through the tunnels? And he's like, yeah, and one of them was the asshole who broke my nose or set my fucking car on fire and his brother broke my nose. And she's like, okay, what did you see them doing in the tunnels? Just walking, but, you know, real suspicious. <laughs> And she's like, okay, well, and he goes, you can ask my driver, okay? Ask my driver. He can fucking totally validate what I'm saying. And she's like, we've already talked to the driver of your car, and he has no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) (laughs) So now Kylo's 90 days is up, and Melly picks him up from prison. (laughs) She takes him home, and she's like, yeah, welcome home. Jimmy, you know, he got another job, and he's off working and shit, but, you know, he uh, wanted you to have this. And it's just like a bucket with ice in it and two beers. And it just, there's a balloon that says, welcome home. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's some mail there for you. And he opens up this package and there's a big case in it. And he flips the latches and opens it up. And we see him looking down into the case, but we don't see what's in it. And it cuts to the FBI interviewing the warden. (laughs) And Hillary Swank is like, okay, so there's these two brothers, (laughs) the Logan brothers. (laughs) They were seen meeting with Joe Bang, okay, who is an explosives expert, just like a week before this robbery, all right? Now, all we have is video. We don't have any audio, so we don't know what they were talking about. But then the very next day, Kylo Ren fucking drove his car into a gas station (laughs) and then got sentenced to 90 days in the same prison. You don't think that's kind of weird? And the warden's just like, Do I think it's weird that criminals are friends with criminals? (laughs) No, I don't think that's weird at all. And then she's like, so you didn't have any problems that day, the day of the race. There were no problems here at the prison when, uh, you know, maybe Joe Bang could have escaped with Kylo Ren and snuck back in. Nothing happened here that day. And he just goes, nope. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow she's like uh there was a fire alarm called in so you still want to tell me nothing happened here that day He's like oh that was just a small kitchen fire you know <laughs> it happens here from time to time but it was taken care of lickety split and yeah there's no problem she's like there's no way anybody could have escaped during that and he goes no 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 we do not have an escape problem here at monroe <laughs> And then it cuts to Joe Bang in the cafeteria eating, and the warden comes in to visit him. <laughs> and one of the guards like picks up his tray and drops it on the ground. And then the warden's like, you better pick that up. <laughs> so he gets on the ground to pick it up, and then the warden just starts kicking him in the face. Because he, like, he knows. <laughs> he knows what Joe Bang did. That he staged the whole fucking thing, you know? <laughs> Cuts to the FBI headquarters, and they're all talking about how they're investigating these Logan brothers. And yeah, you know, uh, Kylo Ren, he was seen in those tunnels by that British guy. And then another agent is like, no, nah, man, he's he's incarcerated. You know, he's been in prison this whole time. And his brother Jimmy, and they're like, yeah, what about him? What about his cell phone? Well, his cell phone's turned off. You know, he hasn't paid the bill and whatever, so... uh There's no way we can GPS track him, but we do have eyewitnesses saying he was at this beauty pageant in fucking West Virginia. And then Hillary Swank is like, I hate airtight alibis. (laughs) So now it cuts to Joe Bang finally being released from prison. (laughs) So the first thing he does is he goes to Kylo's bar and he's sitting there drinking a beer. And Kylo Ren now has a brand new robotic prosthetic arm. (laughs) And he's like, yeah, so uh, you heard from your brother? Kylo's like, no, I haven't heard from him since uh, since he drove off with the money. It's like, yeah, you don't think that's a little weird? Yeah, I think it's fucking weird. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Last I heard, he moved south because uh, his ex-wife moved to Lynchburg or whatever, and he wants to be near his daughter. It's like, okay, well, if you do talk to him, you tell him that I'd like to talk to him. Because he's got no money now, you know? Yeah. And all the prisoners, they saw the news as well, that the money was returned. And he never told you why he gave all that money back. It's like, no, man. So Joe Bang goes to pay for his beer, and he's like, no, no, no. It's okay. It's on the house. Oh, how generous. <laughs> so now the FBI is at the raceway, and they're talking to the, uh, I guess, like the big executive. 
And he's like, yeah, you know what? I mean, that robbery happened six months ago, and we just feel like it is, it's time to move on. So we're going to go ahead and drop the investigation. We just need to close the case. And Hillary Swank is like, yeah, I've uh, actually heard that you got a big insurance settlement for all the money that was uh, taken and the, you know, the uh, damage that was done to your facility. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we did. She's like, but I also heard that you were never able to quantify how much money was actually stolen. <laughs> so if you never knew that, how did you know how much to report? You know, like, how did you get this, this figure? And the guy's just like, all I know is that the matter has been resolved to our satisfaction. <laughs> so they got a big, huge settlement from their insurance and then they fucking got the money back. So they're good. Yeah. Now Joe Bang is waking up in his house and he goes into the kitchen and he pours some coffee and his life sucks. <laughs> and then he hears a noise on his front porch. Da -da! He's like, what the fuck? And he goes down to his front porch and he's looking around. There's nobody there. And he walks out there and he just sees this brand new shovel on his front porch and he picks it up like, what the fuck? Fucking kids or whatever. Throws it down and he starts to walk back inside and then he stops. <laughs> He looks back at the shovel and he takes it out to the oak tree in his fucking backyard and he starts digging. And there's like grass and everything, but he digs up a big old fucking bag of money. <laughs> <laughs> and the bag has this weird red tie around the, the top of it. And here's where we get the flashback of how things actually went down. <laughs> so we see that Jimmy did not accidentally turn it to vacuum. He purposely did that so that Kylo's arm would get sucked off and it shows him telling Joe Bang to go and help fix, you know, whatever is the problem with the two brothers, which was the gate not opening, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, while Joe Bang was out there, Jimmy kept filling up bags with money and he even opened up the big vacuum cleaner and took the arm out and he took all these bags of money and he went and threw them into a dumpster. <laughs> and then he's talking to that guy that the security guards found smoking in his office, and it turns out that he's the driver of the garbage truck. So he just like dumps the dumpster into his garbage truck and drives out to the city dump. He does that, and then he marks on a map of the dump where he dumped it. Mm. Then Jimmy shows up at the gate, and he was like, yeah, the chain is caught. The chain is caught. You just got to fix it like this. Well, what he had actually done was he took like a piece of plastic and stuck it into the fence so that it was blocking the eye for the automatic gate. Yeah. So all he did when he fixed the chain was he pulled that out of there. No. Oh. So he purposely held them up, you know, so he could have time to dump all that money in the dumpster. So then it shows him and this garbage truck driver out at the dump. And uh, they're like directing the guys with the back hose, like where to dig, where to dig for whatever they're looking for. And then they start digging with shovels and he finds these bags with these red ties on them. And there's a whole shit ton of them. <laughs> now it shows the big, tough black guy that Joe Bang had the proposition for. And he's getting out of prison. And there's a limo waiting for him. <laughs> he gets in. And there's a big envelope. He opens it up. It's full of fucking $100 bills. And the driver's just like, where to, Mr. So-and-so? And that guy just starts laughing. <laughs> now it cuts off to the nurses that were riding the, uh, the mobile clinic. And Sylvia's friend is like, yeah, here, you got some mail. It's pretty heavy. I don't know what it is. And then on the envelope, it says Sylvie, and it's sealed shut with My Little Pony Band-Aids. She opens mm -hmm. it up, and it's full of cash. Mm -hmm. To help with the mobile clinic. <laughs> and then it shows Gleema getting into her shitty car that got rammed, and there's a cake box on the passenger's seat, <laughs> and she opens it up, and it's full of money. Yeah. So now it shows Jimmy, finally, and he's uh, at his ex-wife's new house in Lynchburg, and he's in a Lowe's uniform. He's picking up his daughter. She's like, I want to go get gelato. And he's like, I thought you couldn't eat ice cream because it'll make you fat. She's like, no, no, I'm done with that pageant bullshit now. Now I'm going to be a chef. Hey. So they're talking about that, and she's talking about how they make gelato, and they're getting into the truck, and it's just like a nice moment between a father and his daughter, like trying to pick the pieces up. Yeah. And move on. So they drive away, and it cuts to that night at the bar, which is called Duct Tape, mm -hmm. by the way. And Kylo's talking to Jimmy, and he's like, you know, you never did tell me how you knew 
when the coast was clear to go out and get all that money. And Jimmy's like, well, you know how when you don't pay your cell phone bill, if you go one day past not paying it, they shut your phone off? And Kylo's like, yeah. Well, just after the robbery, I paid my phone bill. So they turned it back on. And then I never paid it again. But my phone never shut off. Because obviously the FBI was fucking tapping my phone. Uh All right? And uh, yeah, just a week ago, it finally shut off. (laughs) <laughs> and Kylo's like, damn, man, that's pretty fucking smart. <laughs> so at that point, the young nurse, Sylvia, she walks into the bar and she's like, hey, babe, how's it going? And Jimmy's like, yeah, all right, babe. Now, you know, <laughs> we're happy now. And the camera pans over and we see Joe Bang is in the bar as well. And he is sitting at the bar with Melly and they're sweet talking. So, you know, they're going to be together. <laughs> Everybody's got a love in their life except one-armed Kylo Ren. <laughs> oh, man. And we see this woman sitting behind him on the other side of the bar, and all we see is her hair. And she's like, excuse me. And he turns around, he's like, you? Yeah. She's like, yeah, you know, uh, I wanted to uh, take part in that toast that was happening, but, you know, I had an empty glass. And he's like, yeah, it's a bad, it's bad luck to toast with an empty glass. She's like, yeah, that's what they say. Could you pour me a drink? He's like, yeah, hey, are you, uh, are you new in town? <laughs> and he, he likes her. She's like, well, yeah, I am new, but I am, uh, I'm hoping to, uh, stay a while. And he, uh, he pours himself a shot to toast with her and he goes, well, here's to stay in a while. And then it shows her drinking it and it's Hillary Swank. (laughs) And then the credits roll, baby. Damn. Yeah. Oh man. Is that a grim ending? It's a setup for a sequel Uh, for an oceans 12 type sequel. Wow. Yeah. All right. After the credits, it said, no one was robbed during the production of this film except for you. (laughs) (laughs) Good job, man. Thanks, man. What'd you think, Rick? I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, uh, they definitely cut some corners, and it was not as fleshed out as any of the Oceans movies. Hmm. But that's how rednecks work. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a good time. Yep. So there you have it. Logan Lucky on Movies with Ron. So you actually kept like half the money. Yeah. Know? Yeah. But no one ever knew how much there was. Yeah. Because the concessions were all cash only. Just throw it all in the vault and we'll count it later. Right. So it was still a lot when they got what they had back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the perfect crime. Yep. <laughs> Folks, if you're using Apple Podcasts, we'd love it if you'd leave us a rating and review. Thank you. We're on all your other favorite podcast apps and movieswithron.com. Find us on Instagram and Twitter, at Movies with Ron. There's a Facebook page. It's been fun. Yep, love you. Take care, everybody. Movies with Ron. Hey, you guys, Sonny Landham died. Uh, You know who that is? uh, Billy. Yeah, that's Billy from Predator. Badass motherfucker. You want to talk about when we looked him up? (laughs) Yeah, he was part of a service (laughs) that you could uh, pay for to have celebrities call (laughs) your friends or something. (laughs) For like 700 bucks, you could have Sonny Landham call your brother and wish him happy birthday. Yeah. Say lines to his movies. Yeah. I regret not never doing that for you now. <laughs> he, uh, like many Predator actors, ended up getting involved in politics. He was running for governor of Kentucky. Yeah. But he ended up uh, having to back out because he made some racist comments. <laughs> he was kind of a wild guy. Ah. All right, everybody knows that trivia about how they had to hire bodyguards during the production of Predator not to protect... Sonny, but to protect everybody else from him. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because he was like such a wild drinker and violent dude. Oh, jeez. Uh, was he really Native American? I think he was half, yeah. Oh. He played a lot of those roles. He played a lot of roles named Billy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, that's probably why he was named Billy in Predator, because he asked for it or some shit. I don't know. Huh. Anyway, not a lot of people know this, but... He got into a bad car wreck and lost both of his legs. Oh. 
Oh, God. And if you look him up on IMDb, you'll read trivia about him, you know, being in his movies. He was in a movie called 48 Hours. It's a very famous film. He's in Predator, of course. They talk about his uh, his political ambitions. And in the Sunny Landum trivia at the very bottom of the list, there is a short little entry that says, Lost both legs in a car crash and is, as of 2016, living as homeless. Good Lord. Yeah. Jeez. So I looked this up. And yeah, there's a photo of him with no legs in a wheelchair. And there's a blurb that says, Sonny Lanham has fallen on hard times and we're, uh, we're collecting money to help him out in the, uh, get Sonny moving again campaign. Nice. It's like the most depressing thing ever. And oh, then he God. died of congestive heart failure. Oh man. Poor guy. Yeah, man. Such an unsung hero. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? You gonna pick us up? Raise us? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to do that. (laughs) Sonny, we love you, man. Rest in peace. There's something out there waiting for us. And it ain't no man. All right. Holy shit. Love you, Sonny. Okay, Logan Lucky. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Sorry, that laugh was so loud.